Welcome back, Summoners and Summonettes. We are now on to our next match and our final of the day, Team Solo Mid versus Winter Fox. Now, for both these teams, their victories in Week 1 were actually largely one of the backs of their mid laners. Yeah, Pobelter on that Fizz game when 15 people were ganking mid every third second seemed <laughs> uh, pretty relevant. And honestly, both the teams are pretty much built around getting their solo laders ahead and letting them carry. And TSM actually struggled against Team 8 because Santorin, he used four Rengar ultimates in the mid lane and only netted Bjerks in that one kill. And with all those resources spent in the mid lane, without the significant payoff, he didn't become a monster, and they're right. losing as a team. I wonder if that changes here. It just doesn't seem like it when it's both team strategy. It's almost like it's going to be an arms race, and they should just start with five people mid. It's going to be definitely interesting. I, by the way, like Netted and Rangar. Today we're going to mark another unlocked achievement, as it, is the only, as it is only the third time brothers have played in the same game, or pairs of brothers have only played uh, in the NALCS. Helios and Avalon will be starting today, which means Winter Fox now is only one man short of their intended roster. Yeah, we've had the Wiley clan, Odd One yep. and Maple Street before, and also Clicky D, one of our observers with his brother Nick Wu. But this is the only time the brothers have played on the same team right. in North America. And to speak a little bit more about the team, Helios, who is back this week, has been the team's primary shot caller since he joined the team in the summer split when they were known as evil geniuses. So even though they're still waiting for their support Imagine to have the full completed roster, it'll be our first opportunity to see how this group performs with Helios' leadership back in the mix. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch out for. And, and it's been tricky because we've seen mixed results from brothers and, and just sort yeah. of the, the uh, untested like Korean talent coming in. It, it, we have to see how Winter Fox performs well, with their I new mean, top winner. If the last two games are any indication of yeah. how the Koreans are <laughs> going to do today in the game. Uh, but every situation is unique. Yeah. And it's a tough first matchup for Avalon specifically against Dyrus. It's definitely going to be. But guys, we're going to check out the starting lineups for this match. On the blue side is Team Solo mid with Dyrus in the top lane, Santorin in the jungle, Bjergsen in mid, Wild Turtle on AD carry, and Lustboy on support. And on the red side, it is again the new look Winter Fox. Avalon in the top lane. Helios in the jungle, brothers sitting side by side, Pobelter in the mid lane, all tech on 80 carry, and subbing in yet again at support is Glebe against his former team. Yeah, it's going to be a bunch of fun. Too to many storylines. you got to fit there, some in the, stand, the lineup graphic. I feel like throughout the history of LCS, there have been so many former team stories now just because you see, you know, Glebe bouncing around teams, like Curse have picked up about 700 million former That's LCS true. players in the first place. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start this one up in Champ Select. Cassidin, by the way, first ban for Team Solomon. Unfortunately, guys, the overlays are broken for today. Hopefully, they'll be fixed for tomorrow. We will read you out the bans. The picks will show up just fine, though. Yeah, I'm expecting a couple mid lane bans in this one. Or there's the alternate of just banning out the junglers so they can't assist the mid lane very heavily. Uh, Rek'Sai was the first ban for Winterfox. So Cassidin and now Sivir joining the pool of champions banned by Team Solo Mid. And there have been, you talked last game actually about the giant repository of these these contested champions, they really sought after ones, and, and that pool is very, very large. It's not like you can just spend your bands on it and now the big contested champions are gone. There's so many, it's weird that they actually still keep using them. Like, they're, they're not doing targeted bands here. Cassid and Sivir, now Lissandra, the third band for TSM. Meanwhile, for the red side, Rek'Sai, Aurelia, and Rumble, where Winter Fox is three bands. Yeah, and I think Freak, more than anything, while there is this large pool of shared contested champions, every team will have their own subset of champions that mm -hmm. they are comfortable with or not comfortable with. That's true. And the same thing goes for what they are comfortable against. And in this case, that's just the way the bands fell down. It was Cassidy and Sivir Lissandra, banned by Team Solomid, and then Rek'Sai, Aurelia, Rumble for Winter Fox. I would say, based on those bands, are very unfortunate they aren't on the screen, sorry about that. But it's more targeted at TSM's Dyrus. And yeah, Dyrus is going to lose out on a couple of his champions here. Interestingly, we're seeing these champions paired together so often. Lulu and Janna once again picked up here, this time on Winter Fox. The disengage poke comps happening a lot, while Turtle is going to get his shot at Kalista. And I actually asked him about Kalista uh, builds a week and a half, two weeks ago, and what do you like? And he said he wasn't really sure between Hurricane builds or not. So we have to see which way he tilts. And you play Callista. I and love Hurricane you. Callista. Well, here's the funny thing. Of all... So Callista actually, in my opinion, has a much stronger following in the North American scene mm. than pretty much any other region. I mean, Korea's 
been playing for much longer. They only had that Callista bug Sneaky talked about on the desk for a very short amount of time, right? And they just haven't played it. Europe has seen somewhat limited play. Freeze played it over there. Yet, I feel like I'd wake up in the morning, look on Reddit, and there would either be a Sneaky highlight, a double lift highlight, or a wild turtle highlight on Callista. Those three specifically, so fitting that they have all now debuted Callista for themselves in consecutive games in the LCS. You know, I feel like Callista is the inverse Rengar. Everyone loved Rengar, and he decided to follow the train, did a horrible job of it. We started Callista. Our Callistas are actually good. Well, generally, if you start the trend, you're good at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> though. Followers that's we have something good in NA for once, chat. Let me have this. We're good at something over here on this side of the pond. Bix all the way here for TSM. So, LeBlanc here for Bjergsen. Dyrus gets his Maokai despite all the bans against him. And Lustboy gets his Annie. Yeah, and really fast conclusion of this pick ban phase is they really had their minds set. As far as the gank for mid lane game goes, the Rengar is a very strong ganker. What's interesting here is the Morgana counter pick to LeBlanc. Ooh. Now this is something that is a very real counter, but we haven't seen in the LCS. Black Shield on Morgana, plus just being able to shove the wave with her puddle, neutralizes the crap out of LeBlanc. I've been waiting for a very long time for people who first pick LeBlanc. My Rank 5's team in much lower elo has been destroyed by this on a couple occasions, and we've then done the inverse. It's a really strong matchup for Morg, especially in the early and mid game. And I feel like Winter Fox just took a page out of Starhorn Royal Club, by the way. You've got the Rangar jungle and a bunch of supports for an AD carry named Altec. This is the Tristana show. Like, true. Late game damage is coming from exactly one person, and it is one of the strongest AD carries in NA. Had a great performance last year on EG, even though the team didn't do so well. And you're going to hope for this guy to again put on a great performance here on this Tristana. It is protect the Altec. He had a 500 plus gold per minute game when he was playing on Sivir. And he even had a pretty good performance, if I remember, in their defeat. He was the only mm -hmm. person to really get kills. So let's just put more power into that one guy while Winter Fox still doesn't have their entire team together. It yeah. doesn't seem like all that bad a strategy. We'll see if they can do it. The match is about to get underway. So head over to Twitter and vote for the team you think will be victorious. Send either hashtag TSM win or WFX win to at Edible Esports. Sprightly crowd for the final game we have here of the day. TSM. Let's see if they can bounce back after the, after their defeat. Both these teams on coming off a loss. Don't want to call it a streak because it is just one game. Sure. But they want to avoid a losing streak. Well, one of these teams is going to end up 2 1. One of them is going to end up 1 and 2. But for Bjergsen, one of the dangers in this game is facing Poe Belzer and his versatility. I actually think Popo and I have very similar play styles. He, he's a player that can play a lot of different things. He likes to play Assassins, but he also plays a very good like backline champions like Xerath and all those kind of champions. So I can't really expect what to come out of Popo because he's a very versatile player who can, I feel like he can pull out anything at any time. And I just pretty much have to be able to do the same. I have to be able to counter whatever he can pull out and I have to be prepared for pretty much any pick. So I think Popo is just a very well-rounded player and I can't wait to see him grow. And it's such a great time to hear that quote from Bjergsen because that's exactly what Poe Belter has done. He has pulled out a Morgana in the mid lane yeah. to counter Bjergsen's LeBlanc. So we'll see, depending on how Bjergsen plays this, some greater roaming potential, some greater assassination potential from the LeBlanc. But in the lane, Poe Belter looking for a large amount of control. And I got to say, I have to commend Winter Fox's pick ban phase because this feels so well rehearsed. Right, you pick a Morgana mid, you know the damage fall off is going to be eventual. She's not there to be a damage carry, she's there as a control mage. Expected the LeBlanc pick, was ready to counter pick with Morgana, and to supplement all of that, they made sure they picked a late game AD carry, so that when their mid laner fell off, their AD carry would spike up, be protected by all these shields, and carry the game for them. So a really, really nice preparation, I would say, by Winter Fox. To have winning lanes and I would say, a strong team comp on the back of it. Check out this early game invade, though, from TSM. It looks like Santorin's starting red buff, a la what St. Vicious did earlier. Now he'll try a gank mid and then go down for blue. But Pobelter, if he doesn't have black shield yet, he would be in trouble. He does. he does. 
have that not skilling up dark bind flash done. but he didn't get the land the there's the w flashes the knockout but it's gonna be too little too late first blood goes to bjergsen lust boy with the instant flash stun he skilled up incinerate on annie and po belter could not react in time to that also burning his flash so that lane advantage counter pick edge he may have on bjergsen gets set back a peg with that three-man early game gank mid. And now with the supports running across to their various lanes to defend other people, you're seeing Dyrus getting to sit in a one versus one down to the bottom lane. Whereas Wild Turtle, you've got to be afraid of him. No one's facing him at all. Experience advantage TSM. Yeah, I really want to see how Avalon does as well. Obviously, he didn't pick up much in any type of early lane swap. Dyrus had the advantage of being able to take out a camp with saplings to get a level 2 on Maokai. Voodoo is granted no such luxury, so as good as Winterfox's composition may be, they have to not lose the early game. Lust Boy with no flash oh, this is could a great be successful. Done. They're gonna wait all the time and then get the root. That's picked up while Turtle gets exhausted. The rend will not be enough, and Winterfox fires back. Well, that's one thing about using your support flash early on in the game and then going and pushing up in a lane swap situation. It's rather dangerous. And Helios, with years of competitive experience, was able to punish the one thing TSM burned in that game to get something back. Well, I gotta say, they kind of burned Pobelter too with the uh, ignite and everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. TSM. First blood advantage, they still hold a gigantic gold lead, and of course, Dyrus still happy in that lane. Wild Turtle unafraid in the 1v2 as well. Does not expect a return from, me uh, sorry, not Meteos, Helios right here. Yeah, now they're using the Callista Sentinel to try and stop those ganks from happening. Uh, they need a few more wards in the mid lane if they want to maintain their pushed up position. This is TSM in this top lane to avoid Helios from coming through the river. The other thing they can do to block the river is obviously get the Scuttle Crab down. I actually learned something recently about Scuttle Crab. So it has 60 armor and MR. If you knock it up or stun it, I believe those are the only CCs that count, it loses 50 armor and MR permanently till it respawns. Which make, even though Jarvan's not the best single target damage dealer, because he can knock it up, it becomes 30-ish percent easier to kill after EQing it and then just shreds the darn thing. Yeah, another thing is if you have the Krug's auto stun, that'll do it for you. Oh, true. Off auto attacks, and then you would use your EQ to just kill it super fast. Mm -hmm. But the rotations are pretty key in this game. I wonder if Pobelter will just be left alone in this mid lane since he's not really on an assassin and is relying on the pick. And if Winter Fox will do other things to try and get an edge. They're going to do out. this. Santorin flashes, but he's so close to dead. They can't quite chase it down. Instead, they're going to smite his camp away and say, get out of your own jungle. Nice. Preempt the mid lane gank. Get the jungler before he gets there. Santorin's out of there, and they're going to try and deny Santorin a little bit. Meanwhile, Avalon is in trouble. Uh, a lot of damage from the W passive as well. Wild Turtle, uh, it's going to be lost by holding aggro. Will die. Execute. Execute. Oh, no. Wow, no damage came out from Avalon there. Even though he flashed for the finish, he never got an auto attack off onto Lust Boy. He was completely focusing his spells and autos on to Wild Turtle, who was killing him. Some unfortunate events right teleport. there. And now he has no flash for his teleport. Leave his flash. Nice! Ooh. Oh, wow. Gets the W. One auto, two autos. Oh. There's the kill. The shield from Avalon gets him an assist. So the teleport wow. was worth it anyway, apparently. <laughs> but this would be a PP. tough gank. I wonder what Helos is going to try and get. They'd have to combo a binding with the root in order to make this work. But Jarvan is on the other side. These teams love going mid. Santorin knows there's nothing he's seeing him. He's got the Raptor buff. It's a pink core to even add further safety to his route. He goes flanks around. How good is Oh, the W's down on cooldown. Just got to land it. Can he do it? Jukes oh, nicely man. done, Bjergsen. If he would have been hit by that, there's a chance he could have never flashed away for safety. Like, that was a very competent yeah. juke there by Bjergsen. Because being able to chain the Rengar route into a Dark Binding from Pobelter. So even though he only has one point in it, it would still be an extra two seconds from the Dark Binding. Plus all plus Ignite may have been enough to kill. 
I definitely believe it. There's actually a lot more damage than you expect from mid Morgana. And hey, to call back out to the Twitter question, the uh, Chalice pickup there for Pobelter knows he needs to not get bursted out by Bjergsen. He's afraid of an AP burster, so Chalice instead of Morella Namicon. Holding true to the rule. This boy again looking to make a play. It definitely is a pattern. They take the player who is newest to the team in the LCS, who may be uncomfortable in their role, and they just they try and tilt him, honestly. It's, mm -hmm. it's what we've seen in these last few games. These guys have been heavily targeted. Avalon, again, his debut game for Winter Fox has been under a lot of pressure here from the TSM team. He definitely has, but with Glebe here to support him, looks like they're holding in a decent spot so far. Wild Turtle farming up pretty nicely. Hurricane first, by the way. You can see the components there. Bjergsen on the roam. It's a 3v2. Down goes the engage, but they don't find anything. Avalon gives up a little bit of golden XP. That's an ult and a failed roam. Yeah, I totally agree on that. You can see the Winter Fox lacking in ward control. The fact that that roam was able to happen without Pobelter getting significant mid lane pressure. Because Pobelter was respecting the ganks so heavily, he was unwilling to push up that mid lane. It means Winter Fox needs to get some map control. Speaking of map control, though, one thing that does surprise me, because I just saw Dyrus TP bot lane. You typically, at this point in the game, see the top laners walk top, hold their teleport, and prepare for a dragon fight. Avalon's TP is down. He's staying top lane. In fact, Glebe's up there, too. Neither team seems very willing to push for a dragon, which you just tend to see in these lane swap scenarios. Well, we also tend to see this from TSM. <laughs> if we're gonna oh! Two of their games as an example. They gave up the first several dragons against Cloud9 in their first game. And they, neither TSM nor Team 8 put much priority to it in game two of the week. It is an objective that TSM doesn't care that much about early. It, it feels like. I think that's a fine way to play the game, for what it's worth. I just know that the ones that tend to be free, it's like you might as yep, well. But true. Both teams, I think, gave the opportunity to allow a dragon. By I the think other. they're comfortable with the lane swaps. And the investment that they would take to do it backwards is just not worth it. That's because right. they would lose the time and give up an edge that way. TSM wants Wild Turtle to have farm. Winter Fox wants Alltech to have farm. And that is happening, of course. And to have a Tristana have an uneventful laning phase. Nice guy. Even, yeah, very, very nice. Helios, hello. Glebe and Avalon. Actually, if, as long as you hit it once, the move speed drops significantly. And you can usually get rid of that Sentinel before it reaches the brush. But just not quite hitting it in time. Out goes Helios. Uh, but yeah, as you were saying, uh, with the lane swap scenarios, you're right. Alltech getting a free land on Tristana is plenty happy if you can ride out that early to mid game lull Tris tends to have. But just keep in mind, TSM have all that free farm with Dyrus not being opposed in this lane, whereas Avalon is having a rough time. And I do really have to commend TSM for that early gank in the mid lane. Even though Lustboy later lost his life for burning Flash, the fact that it's allowed Bjergsen to win this matchup where he is counterpicked by the Morgana is because of that early pressure. And a TSM without Bjergsen is really not TSM. Just shows how worth that first one was. That was definitely beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. In the gravity game, we saw Saint unable to revisit after the flash was burned. To be fair, this happened for TSM as well. They did not revisit Pobelter with the flash down, but the kill came in all the same and it was the lead for Bjergsen. Now we're seeing ward control started a little bit over the dragon area, 11 minutes in, we see two wards from Winter Fox on the screen right now. It's almost like as if a switch was flipped and they say, all right, I guess it's time for dragon now. It was convenient for both of the guys to back at the same time, it looks like, except Alltech is now trapped top lane. So, so no. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wrong. TSM said, now it's time for dragon. They didn't have teleport. Yeah. Dyrus has got another minute and a half on that guy. So uh, yeah, still just They're all in on Alltech's farming. That's the only thing. What they did do is swap back when Hurricane came in. While Turtle got that item, showed up bot lane and said, let's start bullying. Tristana's going to be at a trough here. And he's right, actually. So. And they swapped the Tristana back. It's all about the AD carry farm and counter farm. It's less about the dragon. Yep. TSM has littered the dragon area with wards, and they've yet to go for it. The sweeper comes out, and he's like, no, these wards are going down again. They want to make sure Rengar can't sneak in without ulting in. Wild Turtle with some click clears away. By the way, some of you guys may have noticed the double rens going off. You hear the ch, -ch, -ch twice. Uh, the second rend actually deals the like reduced as though it were a stack. 
damage. If I'm making sense to you guys, Ren basically, if there's bullets in the air, will recast when those last bolts hit. Uh, and the way Ren deals damage, there's an upfront amount and then an amount per stack, much like Twists or uh, Twitch's expunge. Those secondary Rens deal the quote unquote stack damage, the reduced amount. So there's no like gimmicky bonus damage dealt that way. Altec though getting hit pretty hard by Dyrus. Knocks it back to get away from the ulti, but Avalon getting dived. They are putting up so much effort on pushing this Lulu around. Altec takes a bit of damage. Dyrus healthier in this trade, but here Rengar comes Rangar. Uh-oh, it's going to be a flash. The Bola, I think, missed. Anyway, the slow lands. Helios has another route. The bot turret went down. Nicely done by Turtle, but nothing gained for Helios. Yeah, really. Alt, Bola, they lose the turret bottom. The dragon is going the other side, revealing himself in a sense. Great reaction time by Dyrus to flash that Bola and really save his skin. It means TSM wins this on pretty much all fronts as far as trades go. Absolutely beautiful by TSM. They go for the Dragon, but it's finally convenient. The early smite into the Ren. We've been tracking a little bit on the Analyst desk before this game uh, how these teams are playing around the, the Callista Burst. Of course, she's so good at securing objectives your team's already doing. And the thought is you don't want to smite and run at the same time. You give a, you give a window for your opponents to kill it. But you can smite it to make it die faster you know, at a respectable time frame and then Ren for the Burst because you typically beat smite with it. And so far, these teams are doing a good job of that specifically. Yeah. Yet to see a Callista mess up the jungler smite or something. You're like, all right, I'm going to spike it, and they get too aggressive with it. The bang is like a 200 health. Right. I mean, that's basically what any jungler trying to steal the dragon will do, is they'll just smite it early, hoping Callista was trying to render that number and misjudged. Right. It is the only hope they have of stealing away from Callista. I think that's what uh, Impaler did, I believe, if I have a player right. Was Dominate, I think. Yeah, Dominate did it against... Uh, the Callista Healer. Yeah, C9, uh, <laughs> Sneaky. There we go. We got it together. And yeah, he smited it down to 500, hoping that there was an early rend or an early smite from the side. Didn't happen. Was secured by C9 in that game. It's a swap battle right here. They're only trying to deny the AD carry farm. Everyone's running away from the Callista, but how long can you run when they can chase you like wow, that? Wow, knock up into Tibbers. Avalon just has nowhere to go. The rend, two more autos will do it, and Wild Turtle gets the kill. Beautiful chase. Absolutely, Avalon had no backup. Helios, nowhere to be found. Even if he was there, he may have just found himself another death to Callista's hand. This is really going in the favor of TSM. They got control of the mid lane first, and they're almost systematically trying to shut down the Winter Fox carries. Uh, Poe Belter was shut down at the start. They're chasing Altec around, and when they don't find Altec, they dive Avalon. Oh, hold on. Speaking about getting shut down, Bjergsen forced to flash away, just gets away in time before the ulti ticked on him. Good play by Belter, the early uh, pressure being turned around. Yeah, but look at what they're losing on the rest of the map. Just from Avalon getting wow. destroyed in these lane swap situations. I mean, think about it, this was a very similar investment. 2v1 top lane meant a kill and the turret going down. 2v1 bot lane, eventually Dyrus has to leave, but just the progress being Time made by Wild Turtle. Yeah, okay, Pabelter is... Shield will be up. Lust Boys alone so far. All's well. I hope to try and turn something a little bit easier. Poor Brother does have that blue buff and a beefy black shield just based off ability power. He's not even skilling it. Forced to flash away though. Lust Boy. Oh, the knockback into the team. Is that a dead Annie? Nope. Callista says no thank you. Rengar joins the fray, but down goes Poe Belter. Helios also going to join him in undeath. And Altec forced to run away. Two for zero TSM. Fight just went completely wrong for Winter Fox right there. It all started because Poe Belter had lost his black shield and because they tried to get a catch, but Wild Turtle was one step ahead with the Callista ultimate. Let's see how much TSM can take off this edge because this game's getting out of hand. Here's and looking to harass, nearly brings down Altec. The shield is late from Avalon. And just more pressure. Team Solomid playing this incredibly well. Center on recalls on award. No fear. Why doesn't he kill it? I feel like he should kill that. He's continuing the trend of North American junglers recalling the most awkward places possible. We'll see. Maybe he'll get it. Maybe he'll get it later. I have faith. <laughs> Wild Turtle will get it. He was saving the gold for his AD carry. A true supportive jumper. Taking a look at this fight again. The idea was great from Gleave. 
getting Lust Boy back and then going straight in. But then the counter engage was even better since after the counter engage happened, there was no peel alt from Glee because he used it to engage. At that point, the gold lead from TSM and the combat stats were too much for them to take down. It just goes to show you the number of games these teams are playing in scrims against Kalista. Like, now let me tell you, there to... are a few spots on the map where wards are bugged and you can't see through the fog of war. That is not one of those spots. That ward is clearly visible from pretty much every single angle in that brush. So it is just TSM or Santorin missing out on killing that ward. Bam! That one! They destroy the vengeance. And th the only way you won't don't see a ward is if... Wards just basically draw lines. So if you can't have a straight line of vision, if a wall cuts it off, even if you're in the same brush as a ward, you won't be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Or wards only see a certain distance, and these bottom lane brushes are so long that you can have a pink ward at the very front of one. It doesn't mean the very back of the brush isn't warded, because the pink ward vision radius does not reach that far. Right. Just explaining ward vision a little bit. Right, of course. There's some confusion on the topic. Hey, I talked about Rend for a while, so can't really hate you for this one. Nice little poke. Belcher takes a spear to the back of the head and backs up a little bit. Finds Dyrus, though. He's a bit over aggressive. The whole team jumps in. It's a 1v4. Dyrus in the wrong place at the wrong time. Good pickup. That goes to Alltech. Boy, did they burn a lot for that kill, though. But all's all, that end, all is well that ends well. If yeah. Alltech can get some farm, he needs to hit a few more item breakpoints, however, before he becomes a real threat. And this is the scary thing. Is he's also up against an early frozen heart from Dyrus. He is being as tanky as possible. Oof, that's brutal. Yeah, Wild Turtle is going to be carrying a lot of the damage burden here. Of course, Bjergsen can help as well. Looks like DFG is next. Thank you, Bjergsen. And now bot lane tier 2 under fire despite getting a kill. TSM completely in control of this map. They're getting a turret uncontested entirely. I mean, if we think about it, They've already burned all their damage to kill Maokai, so they don't even have, even if they had people here, they wouldn't have initiation threat to push off that turret. It was a smart map movement and lane to push by TSM, but it looked even better because Winter Fox wasn't responding to it. Wow, and there we go, a blue buff on top of it. Just so much being gained. Bjergsen gets the buff himself. Team Slimit well in control. Now the dragon respawns. They're going to go for this one too. That should make it two dragons. Wild Turtle leaves the pit early, and he's going to say, you know what? You can just, just whenever. No rush. Yeah. TSM really comfortable right now. Most of the plays they made this game worked out just right. Helios is going to find Dyrus, but there's just no way those champions kill Dyrus without the entire map to run down for it. Bjergsen able to easily wave clear. These lanes are all under control. Alltech tries to push the bottom lane down, but there's room for TSM to sweep this wave back up. And the thing is, I feel like Winter Fox do just have to wait around for a while. The power of LeBlanc is quite high right now. DFG just came in. You really don't want to fight her at this point in time. Tristana still needs another full item to be completed before she's going to be a real threat to someone like Dyrus' Maokai. Yeah. The execution from Winter Fox just hasn't been there this game. Avalon, not comfortable in these lane swaps, is definitely what it feels like. Yeah, but boy or TSM. Yeah, I mean, Avalon got dove 2v1. It wasn't even a three-man gank. He nope. was just Wild Turtle in a Lust compromising Boy. position. Wild Turtle Lust Boy made a nice play with the Callista Annie combo. So with a 5,000 gold lead and no threat of Tristana just yet, TSM retain control. they are five turrets in, meaning only mid-tier two is standing. They've held immaculate dragon control, albeit starting late. They are so far setting up Baron control pretty darned early. They do have the vision blacked out, I believe, but they don't have a lot of wards in Northern Jungle to watch the counter attempt. Right now, Winter Fox just trying to keep their waves outside of the base. Winter Fox isn't going to make any aggressive play unless they definitely see another singular kill they can pick up because that's the only way they get a little bit of a gold influx. They do have their inhibitor ring of turrets up. That's kind of their last defense at wow. this point. I don't even know if they can stop the Baron. 
I mean, that's the, that's the mid lane, yeah. top lane Morgana damage, which is why we're seeing it more in solo lanes now. Uh, Org is a champion in competitive we see in all three lanes, actually. Mm -hmm. Even, I think it was last night as well. Yeah, um, the Samsung yeah, mid laner only plays Fizz and Morgana, basically. Yeah, well, we also Trace from Gen Air plays it in the top lane. Ah, uh, I didn't see that He's one. He's played it on multiple occasions, actually. Um, to, to much success, they run it in poke comps. Yeah, we saw how good Morgan was in poke comps in, what, our first game of the day. With gravity, just finding bindings. And by the way, that thing does a whole crap ton of damage, so... Hey, good on you guys. And now, let's see. 5,000 gold lead. Holding pretty standard, actually. The minions are getting traded back and forth without contest, so it's really easy to wait for your back and forth. The question is, where does the ward control go from there? Because TSM are always clearing the waves first, getting the vision deeper in, <laughs> requiring enemies to sit there and babysit the waves, and then wards come down when that happens. Drag uh, Baron control is getting rested farther and farther away. There's an aggressive pink ward. That's going to get rid of... Sorry, that's just a regular ward. But the pink ward goes down. Now red buff's controlled by TSM. Now they've got a full screen away from Baron control. Well, it's slowly getting worse. Yeah, that's the typical thing TSM is doing. They're just ward creep. Yep. They're trying to build their vision system into Winter Fox territory. It will become easier if they can actually get down the one remaining middle tier turret from Winter Fox. That is kind of the last vestige of Winter Fox strength. Okay, here's the first attempt. That is, that is not an initiation ultimate. That's a, we have no idea where TSM is. Let's hope to find them. They're right there. It was somewhat successful by Helios. So Dyrus takes some damage. Yep, he sees him. They leave safely. Now, interestingly, Dyrus does not have... Well, now he has a Null Magic Panda, but almost had no magic resist at all. He actually took a decent chunk of health from the Morgana shots. Yeah, well, the fact is, Morgana has low late game damage and needs to focus it on the squishy targets. Oftentimes, you'll see the Morg flash in uh -oh. and go. Uh, without his Anyas, that's not even a possibility. And if he's bursting down Maokai, then okay, if he carries from TSM, would then proceed to destroy. Well, okay, so Helios in the middle of nowhere, forced to recall back. He was afraid TSM completely hold vision I control. It's a, it's a Baron no wards. Right now. And now, does Winter Fox choose to just rush down for an inhibitor as a trade for Baron? There's no way they can stop this. They are all going to send themselves to the bottom side of the map. TSM will get this Baron without contest. The question is, how much can Winter Fox get as a payment for this? One turn. And I don't think they could hope for much more. This Baron was an inevitability based on TSM's map control and current team fight potential. Winter Fox got the best they could out of this. One turret. The Baron was going down anyway. Now it's just a defense game. Three minutes of defense until about 28.30 into the game. Baron buff is going to keep TSM ahead and able to siege against Winter Fox. Despite their comp being a little bit short range, the Baron buff on minions should make this much easier for them. Quick silver sash grab by Wild Turtle early on to make sure he doesn't drop down to Rangar Bolas or Morgana bindings. Yeah, Brutalizer as well. That's a new one. Yeah. Well, he knows there's not much armor being built on Winter Fox, and if there's low armor values, the Brutalizer can be a better armor penetration item than the Last Whisper. True. And if he upgrades that into a Yeoman? Ghost Blade, then it gives him even more mobility on the super mobile Callista. Yeah. I really can't hit on yeah. Yoma's Callista. I can totally see it. Here's a Dragon Attempt. And no worries at all for Wild Turtle. Just gonna make it look cool. He can solo this, of course. Plenty of lifesteal thanks to the Bloodthirster. Drafts into the Ruin King. Yeah, there you go. 2,000 damage Rand. No problem. When you solo it, you get those stacks really quickly, so... Yep. It's actually easier to secure a Dragon when you solo it. Because you can't get the Ren stacks up otherwise when everyone else helps you, so... Smart choice to let Wild Turtle get it by himself. And now, still with Baron, but they look for their first inhibitor turret of the game on the bot lane. I wonder if they're feeling confident enough to flash in and go. Uh, Gleeb took plenty of damage. Yeah, it depends on the poke that Bjergsen can land, and Winter Fox doesn't have much to hold this one back. Next wave, I think this goes down. Or even on this wave, they're on going. This one, they go in. All tech gets oh, exploded! Man. And it's going to be real bad. Pobelter now locked up as well. Will land a stun. Poops up Dyrus a bit, but still, so much damage comes through. The Zonia's Forest Belter is still sure to die. Does so to Lust Boy. Two for zero. Inhibitors theirs as well. TSM decides not to push this one farther. 
But I think they could have ended the game right there. Avalon is a glorified support at this point. It's two supports and a Rengar in the base. And TSM had five people with Baron minions. Slow and steady, I suppose, but TSM completely in control. They absolutely are. There's not much hope right now for Winter Fox, especially when Alltech dies first like that. Shield seemed to be on cooldown. Great play by Bjergsen and co. to make that one happen. Nothing on the map to take except the Winter Fox base here. So TSM, it is still on you with 15 seconds of Baron to push something else down. Top lane. Why not? Let's go. Maybe they need to wait for a while. No, Wild Turtle's only got 1,000 gold. They're going to pick up some buffs on the way. Obviously, Winter Fox is going to try and farm this one out, but they've just fallen so far behind. The Morgana pick against the Blanc needs to win early. If you get to this point in the game, you can really see the lack of effectiveness. Morgana can't get through the tank line of Dyrus, and the team itself is not strong enough to go in if Pobelther did want to try and flash alt in. At this point, Bjergsen can just pick off all tech and the rest of the team solo mid and pilot. Most likely, yeah. So TSM, they want the top lane. No Baron buff. The waves are slowly building up bot. It'll, I think, end up being a double wave by the time it reaches the dead inhibitor. Avalon forced to ult himself just for a simple rotation from Bjergsen. Not good. Yeah, Bjergsen's got his blue buff up as well. So, I mean, he's got 15 seconds at this point before he can do that again. So every wave, Bjergsen brings someone down to one-third health. And unless Pobelter predicts a binding and bursts the guy out, which, to be fair, is possible, I don't see anything going very well right now. Santorin passively farming by letting minions hit him. Clears the wave that way. The wave clear still holding on nicely. Lulu plus Tristana. The Yordle duo keeping the minions outside the base, but here's the big minion wave at the bottom lane right now. Winter Fox has to react to this. There's, that minion's going to crush a turret by itself. Yeah, well, these are trying to hold off. You know, Dyrus takes a bit of damage here. It's the fight. Alltech does survive. Thanks, Parse, and everyone else. Pobelter goes in. The Zodius pops early, though. He's going to land the Sun and only Lust Boy. He's going to trade his life support for mid laner. And now Wild Turtle gets a million damage off of the rest of Winter Fox. Down goes Nexus turret number one from the wave. And it's a sort of late help by Winter Fox. Of course, TSM forced them to hold mid. And this turret down to half. A decent stall there by Winter Fox, but it's only going to be just that, a stall. I don't think we're seeing any kind of turnaround here as TSM continues to push in. There we go. Inhibitor number two. The wave is going to get cleared quickly inside the base. Avalon does not have much to save for himself. Now top lane under fire as well. This could quickly be inhibitor number three. Morgana is back up in five seconds. Rengar's here now. Dyrus at half wild turtle could be available. Winter Fox do not want to go for it. No. Slow and steady this time for TSM. We've only got a really fast Callista. Especially if he finishes that. He almost goes, but we see Baron in 1 minute 30 seconds, Dragon in 1 minute 45. And honestly, this was just a good performance overall by Team Soul Mid, but not necessarily a differentiating one. This is another one of those games where, hey, they got Bjergsen going. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. He's able to take over the game on the block. On top of that, it was a nice showing from Wild Turtle and Lust Boy pulling off this Callista combo, which, if today is any indication, unless Alltech is willing to add that to his champion pool as well, is going to start drawing bans across the league. Yeah. If you're not one of the three that seems to play it right now, double lift, Wild Turtle. Oh. Sneaky. Good knock up by Avalon. Not going to be enough. Lust Boy <laughs> claims his third kill of the game. Additionally, for Avalon, not a great debut. No. by any stretch of the imagination. But once again, Winter Fox has more roster issues than anyone else, especially from the language department. The whole game plan of this team when they were playing in Korea, they have a Korean coach, Po Belter speaks Korean. Everyone was going to play in Korean and they'd have all tech as an English speaking AD carry just hitting things because the AD carry requires the least communication of competitive roles. Yeah. But with Gleeben as a substitute, they can't do that. So they're playing in different languages right now, which is not the plan for this team's construction. TSM going for a hammer number three. Belter forced to flash away. Looks like the Nexus will stay alive for now. But TSM go aggressive. All tech. One hit from dead. Wild Turtle sure to clean this fight up. But Belter will be falling. Two for zero. On to the Nexus. TSM goes. I don't see them being stopped here. Winter Fox forced all the way back into their own base. Nexus now available. TSM take care of business in 32 and a half minutes.
2-1 start of the season for Team Solo Mid. Yeah, they made that one look pretty easy for them. Very few missteps by TSM the entire game. Dyrus got caught out once. Other than that, everyone played super clean. Very convincing victory, taking advantage of the still yet to be completed roster of Winter Fox, punishing Avalon in his first game of the LCS. And yeah, like you said, improving the record to two and one. Improving to two and one, which I believe now makes them a tie for first place since Liquid did lose to Cloud9. TSM tied for first now. Of course, early in the season, but this is what you expect from Team Solo Mid. They're the reigning champions of North America. They're supposed to be up there. A lot of eyes were on Santorin. 0-0-11 zero, zero, for him. He's done just fine. <laughs> Left That's boy. Pretty pumped. Repeat performance here. Also, uh, for a while there, had the most kills on his team with three. Did a great job being a damage-centric Annie. Well, he did have the highest kill participation as well. Three kills, nine, de uh, nine assists. Uh, in a total of 13 TSM kills, so over 90% in that category. And Bjergsen, the guy that got ahead, the first blood gank at level two, even despite the black shield from Pavelter here. The Morgana counter pick, they're just... The 1v1 is going to be fine. The 1v3 may be less so. Yeah, and it was, it was honestly all because of Lust Boy. The black shield, surprisingly, unless he gets instantly stunned, will save him from that gank. Yeah. He, all he has to do is black shield himself, flash towards his turret. Because the knockup's not going to get you, the stun's not going to get you mm -hmm. under that black shield. But because of the ridiculously fast flash over the wall that was giving vision as well from Lust Boy, and the fact that it was his W, not his Q, so the stun applies instantly when Annie throws it out. Right. That's the whole reason it worked. And it was great. It, and we've seen now a couple of these level one Annie ganks. Like, we, yeah. we start identifying these trends pretty early on. Like, that's a good play. That's repeatable. The level one Annie ganks with W, the really clever CLG sort of lane swap creation where you, you like proxy the first sure. wave to guarantee the freeze. Like, you can't even screw it up. A couple of trends we saw today in the NALCS that may be repeated mm -hmm. was the St. Vicious slash Santorn, the two guys that started in the enemy red buff there right. on Jarvan, and then the double lift idea for lane swapping by proxying the first wave with four people. Things, that's the weird thing Maybe about repeated. it, though. That is actually the weird thing about it is, like, the... It's weird that that's, like, a new trend because... It's a lane swap. You go into the enemy jungle first, you take their yeah. big camp. How many times have we seen people get three buffed because they're not sort of respecting the old lane swap rules around, of course, you own Northwest jungle and we own Southeast. It's yeah. the way it, of course, went in this one. Guys, right now, they're going to throw it over to Riv, who is Riff's side with a member of TSM. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by Wild Turtle. Now, TSM, as you said, tied for first. Going to put you on the spot here. Did you think at all the standings would spread out the way they did with teams beating some of the top teams, you guys losing a game as well? What was uh, up? Uh, I definitely didn't expect the teammate to play that well. They're doing really well this split, and I just it, I didn't expect it, and now they're doing pretty well, and we're catching up to it now. All right, so it looked like you had some fun on Callista that game. Now that it's going to be banned forever on out here, you know, was that something you guys came into the day wanting to play, or just since people were playing it, you thought you'd give it a chance? Uh, Callista's my favorite champ right now, so I just want to play her whenever I can. So if I can't get her, I'll be kind of sad, but I just love playing her. She's just a really fun champion. Well, unfortunately, you probably won't get to anymore. Now, you guys, you are going to play Piglet tomorrow with the rest of the team. Two years ago, you got your chance to face off against them. How do you think you're going to fare tomorrow? Uh, I, I don't know. From today, I think I can do pretty well tomorrow, but we'll just have to see how uh, the game needs to go. All right, Wild Turtle, thank you very much. Congratulations on the win, and we're going to send it over to the guys at the analyst desk to break down the rest of the day. Thank you, Riv. A pretty methodical game there by TSM as well. The guys at the caster desk touched on it uh, already, but that level two, the invade and the level two gank, I feel like really accelerated the game for TSM. Big surprise, Team Solo mid goes mid early. <laughs> Triple mid. Yeah, uh. no longer solo mid. It's T -T like well, Team the, all the mid. The name is like a bait. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you only think there's going to be one guy there. There will never be more than one guy in that lane. You don't have to worry. No, but I definitely feel as though giving that early pressure to LeBlanc, as they mentioned, is they counterpicked the Morgana into it. So you have yeah. this idea that that's a lane for Winter Fox that should be winning. It quickly gets put behind. Yeah, and Jat was talking about it too. You shove that wave in really early as Morgana to get the level two and to get the pressure. So you know that wave is going to be past middle when you come to gank it at that early. And then of course, 
TSM, known for their rotations and things like that, they played the game out pretty much perfectly in the sense of uh, extending ward pressure into the jungle, taking the outer turrets, putting Baron pressure, forcing Winter Fox into a terrible bot lane inner turret trade for Baron. Yeah, and I think even just to start it off before that, their lane swap, TSM, was a really good choice. Forcing someone who hasn't played competitive before, like Avalon coming in, lane swaps are one of the hardest things to get used to because that's not something you practice on an everyday basis. And we really saw it there, seemed to have a hard time. Yeah, and knowing the pressure and the aggression that two people can put on you, we saw the Callista chase him all the way down the lane with the Annie. It was so far, and that's something you don't experience at all. Yeah, Avalon definitely struggled a bit today. As a matter of fact, all of the individuals in, that we spoke about in the first segment of the day seemed to struggle. <laughs> Impact, Piglet, Avalon. So you have to wonder how quickly they're going to be able to adapt to this competitive scene. Yeah, uh, I'll give Avalon, he didn't buy a Magi's. This game, he's, so. got, he's got that on him. <laughs> a little, little bit of a bonus there for him. But everybody kind of fell flat, and I think it's a lot of adjustment period getting to be in this competitive scene in North America. And everybody that you talk to, you know, it is slightly different here, but when you're on a completely different team, it's a completely different game. It feels completely different. You don't get lane swapped on the same way. Some people like manipulate the jungle differently, and you're like, whoa, nobody ever does that. And just tiny little nuanced things that you're used to playing in solo queue show up or don't, or don't show up at all, and then you're completely thrown off your instincts. I think it's a really expected result because so many teams made so many off-season moves, mm -hmm. and everyone is scrambling at the end of the season right before we're about to start, trying to pick up people and getting all these last-minute acquisitions. Of course, they're gonna have a rough start for all the people that are just coming over here. I mean, Team Impulse is a really good example because they just all threw together the team very, very recently, didn't even get to practice together. So a lot of these teams are experiencing similar issues. Yep, rough start for some, solid starts for others. Early, early, early in the season. So everyone is very close in the standings. We're actually gonna take a look at those and see how the table is set. So right now the LCS is divided into two groups. At the top, it's a five-way tie for first with the teams holding on to two wins and one loss. That group includes CLG, Gravity, and TSM with their win over Winter Fox today. And sharing sixth place, we got the rest of the field, including Cloud9, Coast, and Dignitas, each team holding one win and two losses. We'll be back tomorrow with five more matches, starting with CounterLogic Gaming facing off against Cloud9. Then Dignitas will take on the Foxes of Winter, followed by TSM versus Team Liquid. So set a reminder for Sunday with a kickoff time of noon Pacific, 9 p.m. Central European. Now for myself, the casters, and the entire broadcast crew, bought the, excuse me, broadcast crew, thanks for watching, and GG. Yeah, uh, Giving Dignitas any room to breathe. Star all comes in. That's going to be Gravity picking up another game. All right. Get, yes. get the bear. Get the bear. Nice. Nice mind, man. Oh, Bash oh, making it to the What a play from Dodo. That could be it. And Team A is going to take the game over Coast. A lot of people have waited for this. This is going to be an amazing match. Pick me up, 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 up. Dominate, 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 dominate. Quas, quas, quas. I'm only quas, 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 quas. You guys are good, you guys are good. Back up, Seeky. Yeah. Careful, careful, good, careful, careful. Nice. Good job. Keep missing. Oh, the flash hook! Oh, they got him! Shao and Shao goes down. That was beautiful. The ballista play. Oh, the heat. Turn off the Turn off the base. Turn off the base. We're going this way. They're going. They go in. All tech gets oh, exploded. And it's going to be real bad. The Vulture now locked up as well. TSM take care of business.